Hey guys, Alec here, and welcome back to Scarlet Hollow. Apparently, this is gonna be episode two. So, without further ado, let's uh, let's get into it. Um, after I started, after I uh, finished recording, I did do the option of uh, what would happen if I slept in her bed, and I feel like I should do this one because there's kind of no point. But also, I kind of. I don't know, it's hard to... There we go, just go to bed there. Can I skip it, is the question. If I can't, then... Oh, no. Oh. Episode 2 awaits. If I continue the word spade of episode 2, please save your game now. Will do. The Yonkies Blinky. Would you like to see a recap episode? Uh... Sure. Long lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides with the countless late nights stops in the seedy depot that would have felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral at Pure of Perlane Scarlet, your cousin's mother and your aunt, seemed like nothing, something you shouldn't ignore, even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with the side of the family. Welcome to our family humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the curse, the house we only have a few rooms at last will be safely accessible during your stay. We wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if we want to do limits. We want your limbs. So the floors haven't been known to give out. This is so cool. It's like an actual like show. So Stella had mentioned she's has Stella has mentioned she's famous. <laughs> oh Avery, I'm not famous. Look, if you're not gonna go around around to your own horn, you know I'm not gonna do it for you. Stella sighs. I'm a YouTuber. She hunts cryptids. A single deer remains behind. Ugh, still creepy. Staring out of the beam of Stella's flashlight while Gretchen winds and pulls at her harness. You'll need those words, but I can't carry a mountain lion corpse out of the corpse out of done. And that's not how I did the voice. <laughs> Come on, you! Whatever your name is, grab the flashlight and help me get light up a good shot! As the creature is running grow louder and numerous, Gretchen violently strains her, her harness. You dive forward to the scoop right into your arms just before she managed to wriggle out of her harness. Your eyes fix it in the dark tree line over Duke's sh shoulder. God damn it! Stella, keep your eye on her for us. Make sure she doesn't get any more trouble. Welcome home. My grandmother, my mother called them ditchlings, and the a terrible omen, a sign of great suffering and destruction to come. The comfort of Stella's guest room, the events of the past evening seemed like something that happened to someone else. You can still clearly picture the terror you felt in those moments. For now, you're safe and you're warm. Tuesday morning awaits. Wake up. You open your eyes. Oh, it's a little Gretchen statue. The sun has risen. The birds are singing. You're still alive, and for now, you are safe. You gaze wondering across the unfamiliar room to the window and the ones was beyond, and you look. Wonder if the monsters are lurking just behind the trees, ready to pounce as soon as you leave the comfort of your new friend's family home. You help but remember Duke. Something gets the tree. Pieces of him scattered across the clearing. A knock at the front door. Your morbid thoughts are interrupted by a distant happy, unhappy voice filtering through the house and pass through the closed door of your bedroom. Where the hell is Alec? Oh hey, Tabby. That's a fresh pot of coffee to tell me you want to come in. No. I'm here to check it on my cousin. Let's make this quick. I have a lot on my plate today. You're barely decent. Maybe mildly scandalous if people saw you like this. You call me collect yourself while tap of the fumes outside your door. Are you sure you don't want to visit a bit? You don't have to run around being the big boss this week for all weeks. Of all weeks, you should let yourself. I'm fine. Thanks. I like, I know you're in there. What the hell are you hiding? Why 
I got to greet them. Now specially prepared to get the three other civilized humans. You open the door and join them in the living area. Gretchen excitedly looks at you and wiggles her tail. Oh, hi, Gretchen. Hi, Gretchen. Morning. How'd you sleep? What exactly did you two get up to last night? We went to the woods to film a video. No, not that part. The cops called this morning and told me all about that. They did? What did they say? Did they find Duke? They didn't find a body. If that's what we'll ask him. But apparently, he never went home last night. And they had a quite a few questions about you, Alec. Ugh, don't worry. I told them that you weren't a standing citizen. Just remember the kindness of next time you think about blowing me off to spend the night with a stranger. Hey, don't be so hard on Alec. I asked her to crash here. Look, I don't care what the cops think, Tabby. There's something horrible in these woods. In those woods, I don't think anyone in this room wanted Alec waking, walking up the mountain alone last night. Stella, would you mind giving me a moment alone with my cousin? While you're at it, please stop calling me Tabby. We're not in high school anymore. I, uh, yeah, all right. This is interesting. Isn't this Stella's house? Why are you bossing around? Come on, Tabby. No bearing guests in the Richmond household. Whatever. I don't really care if, you, if you're here for this. You were in town for less than a day, and my stress is already through the roof. I mean, I get it. Stella got you all worked up, and now you're too scared to walk home. Sure, whatever. That checks out. But I don't care if those woods are chock full of goals and ghosties. You had me worry sick. From now on, you're back at the estate by bedtime. No more than a pop dude to sleepovers. I mean, to be fair, I did, so I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Good. Oh, that's what that was. Good. I'm glad we're going to have this talk. Hopefully, you'll treat my time with respect it deserves from here on out. Speaking of, I've got places to be. I better see you back at the estate tonight. Wait, Tabby, let me know you're free sometime, okay? Tap the size. Relentless. We'll see. But don't get your helps up. Hey, you good? Sorry about Tabby. She totally blindsided me. <sighs> uh, I'll save after this. I think she means well. Yeah, but that doesn't mean your feelings don't matter. I was tense. Are you okay? Uh. Honestly, I'd rather just pretend nothing happened. Yeah, you got it. No need for us to dig around in there. Anyway, sorry for that rude awakening. I've been up in a little while, but hoping to let you get a little extra sleep. We're up now, and we got a full day ahead of us if we're going to the. We're gonna get to the bottom of this. How are you so chipper? You shouldn't be okay right now. I guess I'm just pretty good at capitalizing things. <sighs> Comparamentalizing things. That's a new word. That's a wall, Gretchen. Princess. Oh. What happened in the woods last night was horrific. But right now, we have something important to focus on. I'll have time to process what happened to Duke when we get to the bottom of things. You shouldn't bury your feelings like that. What happened to Duke last night would mess with anyone. I get that, but I'm fine, really. At least for now. I can process this in my own time. Alright, boss. What's the game plan? Oh, don't call me boss, we're partners in this. First things first, I was hoping to swing by the uh, library. Unique's got a hand on, head start on us, and it looks like she's already there. Oh, that reminds me. Let me get a cyber group chat. What's your number? You still exchange numbers. Oh, we still exchange numbers no matter what. I can watch this from Stella that reads group chat. Hopefully, we can find more about the ditchlings from some older local books there. I've got a couple of threads cooking in my. 
cooking in my character forms, but who knows if I'll pan out. Anyways, daylight's burning, so let's roll out as soon as you finish getting dressed. Oh, look at Gretchen. Hey! It's Sybil and Avery, I remember. The walk to town was short. Stella's house is barely a stone's throw from where the remains of Scarlet's ho Hollow once bustling Main Street. You shudder as you stare down the thoroughfare. Thoroughfare. From the chill in the morning air and all the too present memories of everything you witnessed last night. See that building labeled Town Hall? That's actually the library. Well, it's also the Town Hall, but there's just a small upstairs office nowadays. I guess the town's not where it used to be. That and our that and our mayor's really gotten into gotten into walkings. I think there's actually going to be a meet and greet later this week. Could be just a pick pick me up we need. But what everything that's been going on. I wouldn't trust him to help us after how the cops treated us last night. <laughs> There's uh, a lot of reason why we shouldn't trust the mayor to help us. Oh, hey! Morning, Stella. Same to you, Alec. Speak of the devil, we were just talking about you. Coming from Stella's, huh? Do y'all have a summer party? Uh, sorry, y'all. I'm actually in a bit of a rush this morning. I can't really stop the chat. It takes me a bit to set up. So if you want to catch up with the folks or grab something in the diner, you can meet me in the library when you're done. Oh, sure. See you in a bit, Stella. Cool. See you soon. Whoa. She's always has time to chat. She feeling okay? Oh, Stella and Alec just got up in a bit of trouble last night, that's all. Yeah, I just dropped something like that and leave me hanging. What happened, Alec? I'll just tell. The good friends. Sal and I went to the walk in the woods and trying to find a sunk game, but ran into something way worse. Actual monsters. Sybil said that they're called ditchlings, but whatever they are, they killed Duke and have been mutilating the local wildlife. Whoa, 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 so down. Duke is dead? It's true, I'm afraid. That's awful. Has, has anyone told Bull? Yes, he's taken as well as you imagined. I've been going up to check on him today. The poor lad. I need to see Bo. Can't believe you had to see that, Alec. Tell you what, I'm on break in the next half hour. How about you swing by the diner? When I can fix up Sybil's new blend and try and calm your nerves. It's child got it. Let me blend. Um, it's always help you on the bad news. If you need to talk, what happened? I'm all ears. Anyway, it's up to you. See you around, Alec. See ya, Sybil. Take care now, Avery. Yeah, one, one night, tell the truth. Oh, no. Does that mean that there's, they're going to start spreading shit? I really hope not. Because every little thing happens. <laughs> that, mm. I better get back to it myself. I was able to catch you this morning. If only see how you were holding up. Please don't hesitate to stop by. I can be of any help. It's not the fact they don't care. It's more the fact that it's just... Just... Wait. Do you know anything about that also about the Ditchlings? I know you say you didn't know much up beyond the stories, but... I'm afraid that's all true, but I'm sure you and Stella know what it takes to get the bottle of things. I'm so sorry to call a conversation short. I've got things to tend to. Stay safe and God bless. God bless. Stella said you should have some time before she finished sending up. Sure, why not? Head towards the diner. I haven't eaten today, so I might as well. The diner is a, a little quiet today, but the air is still heavy with tantalizing smell of breakfast. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just talk to Avery. So you slide to the booth across the, from Avery. Hey there, stranger. 
before you can exchange words, when he sizes up a fresh mug of tea in hand. Bet you might need this. To answer the 29 down to oink, by the way. What? But the clue pen send sound. How's that sound a pen makes? Wait, pen is like pig pen? Are you kidding me? I wasn't supposed to guess that. I don't know why you even bother with those things. They're just trying to frustrate you. It's just something to fill the time. But maybe I should switch to Sudoku. Maybe leaves Avery complimenting daily newspaper puzzles. Return to their seat. Their seat of behind the counter. So, uh, thanks for telling me about last night. Maybe I want to get into grisly details. So you can tell me. I won't judge. I'll just try the yeah, ever since he took the tea, it tastes like a drinking bowl that someone tried to successfully spruce up with lemon bomb. I'll take another sip. Flavor's strong and certainly unpleasant, but something tastes that must be good for you. Wow, not a lot of folks take chocolate so quickly. It's a fungus that grows on birch trees around here. Mostly super healthy and makes it for a challenge to drink. Call me impressed. At this rate, might as well, right? You spilled the beans. Glad to have someone to talk about the horrors you witnessed. Wow, that's some heavy stuff. I want to still seem distant. Monsters in the woods. Now you have lived here long, but I never heard anything like that happening around these parts. I can't say I like the thought of it. And I think about it. But the cops came in the morning coffee. He mentioned something about going on the woods and look to look for someone. It must be Duke. They have seemed disconnected from it. I figured it could be very serious, but wow. I don't get it. They saw Stella's footage. They saw what happened out there. But it feels like all what they've done is hound me. Hey, I don't know if it'll help your anxiety, but even if they think they did something, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't bother going after you. Those cops come in every day. I feel like they, I know them pretty well by now. Let me tell you, they have no follow-through. I can't tell you the number of complaints they just dropped after a day or two. And I'll vouch for you if they try anything. We're on the case, but I hardly know where to start. Let me know if you hear anything. Definitely. Ah oh, man, looks like my shift is starting. Hopefully the child has a chance to start working its magic. Diners where everyone comes to gossip, so I hear a lot about what's going on around here. I'll let you know if anything matches to these monsters or anything that's strange and usual. Thanks, Avery. Just out of the booth, giving a friendly half wave before disappearing to the back. Leave the diner, ready to continue your day. I'll go to the head library. Head to the former town hall. What once must have been a stately foyer and has been converted into a rows of shelves meeting oh meeting rooms and offices long ago gave way to a sort of reference collections and reading areas. What is this? What's happening in the back here? This is a good place. <laughs> okay. Oh hey, you made it! No, that's mean. Head over to Stella and Kanika's table and settle in. Glad you found the place. Hey, Alec, you look tired. Never done a Scooby Doo before. I'll sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> I like these attitudes. <laughs> I'm still amped up on adrenaline, actually. Never done a Scooby Doo before. <laughs> Some creepy old guy in the real estate scheme and a bad costume is at least a little more believable than monsters and curses. All we need now is for Gretchen to start talking. Interesting. <laughs> oh yeah, cause Scooby-Doo, right. Anyways, I guess we should get started. Hey there, strangers. Hey, literal stranger. Hey, 
I'm Alec, Tabitha's cousin. I'm at Tabitha's funeral. Oh, I should have known you were, you were Scarlet. You look so much like Vivian. Not that I knew her very well. I'm still a little kid when she left. But that Scarlet resemblance is, uh, strong. I'm Oscar Gutierrez. I think it's Gutierrez. Chef Lib- Oh, Chief Liberian and only Liberian. Oscar's amazing. It's actually built for this library from scratch. Yeah, I'm a little jealous of what the, what the kids around here get to grow up with. You don't know how good they have it. Back when I was in elementary school, all the library had was a couple of shelves and boring books donated to buy old people. Y'all are too kind. But speaking of kids, have any of you seen ones leaning around town? I don't care. I don't want to be the helicopter dad, but she wasn't hasn't answered my text, so I wanted to make sure she wasn't getting any trouble out here. There, you know the crowd. She's she hates what I'm with. The good kids at heart. I'm sure they just met up the old Maxwell place doing teen stuff. I went up there plenty of times in my day, but I'm sure I keep my eyes peeled. I'm. Uh, it's not my say. I feel like it's not my say to really say anything. Say nothing, let the others talk. You're not being around, around off anymore, though. It's not safe as you usually is around here. Eh, uh, is that so? Enoch is right. There's some weird stuff going on in the woods. That's why we came here today. You ever heard of creatures called ditchlings? They're a type of cryptid that shows up around places and break up disaster. It kind of looked like Pillbury Doughboy. It was a creepy pasta. That that's a good way to put it. That's actually a great way to put it. Kanika's mom told us about it last night after seeing some footage we got in the woods. Ditchlings. Uh, doesn't ring a bell. Dane, worth a shot. Guess if we were safe trying to predict predict a horrible disaster that might befall our own town, why would you start looking? Well, they say the risk we. That's history repeats itself. So probably figure out what sort of disasters this region typically falls prey to. Uh, should I be worried about something? I don't know yet. I'll be right back. I gotta grab nap some more books. Hey, well, I'm gone, Gretchen. Oh, do you not worry about her, Stella? You're such a good dog, aren't you, Gretchen? Aww. Here, have a biscuit, old gal. Gretchen inhales a soft biscuit. Julie only got a toothless mouth as she swallowed it all. Aw, oh, Gretchen. Pretty sure Stella is barking at the wrong tree. <laughs> Oscar! Oh, not Gretchen. Wrong tree, Oscar. I don't think you have to worry about any whole calamity befalling the town. But she's right about the weird stuff. There's definitely something, something unusual going on in these woods. It's not that we can get the bottom of. I'm gonna try to call Rosalina again. I'm sure she's fine, really. Rosalina's a smart kid. She knows better than going around in trouble. I'm gonna make sure to keep her eyes peeled. Is our characters in the 30s or 20s? Because they seem, I don't know. I don't know how old we are in this. Thanks, Kanika. And now, like, if you see a 30 year old girl, 13 year old girl with a black braid and glasses, you let her know her dad's worried about her. Oxford anxiously wanders off, phone in hand. <laughs> Gretchen. Got him. Just grabbed a whole mess of look of history books. That's just cheese. Stella sits in the mouse pile of the books. Not a table. Pull. Ugh, sorry, pulls up a chair. All right. This is going to be so much faster with the two of you here to help out. <laughs> Gretchen. <laughs> Got our snacks. Got our source documents. Let's get this research party started. Reading the whites. Hmm, this is interesting. I have so many different things. Historical buildings of Scarlet Hollow. Scarlet Hollow. Just the thought of reading a book like this would probably just most people out of people to sleep. You've got a mystery to solve, and to solve it, you need to know everything there is to about this town. Let's start off with the the estate. Scarlet Estate, inarguably the most striking piece of architecture in Scarlet Hollow, and the most elaborate and elegant estate in the region prior to the destruction of Baltimore in 1985. 1980, wow, I can't speak. 
Andrew Jackson Scarlet, wow, what a name, chose the location at the top of the hill in Scarlet Hollow's geographic center, so it might be seen from the towns below. It remains a constant reminder of the families who carved Scarlet Hollow from the wilderness and provided help, wealth for prosperity, prosperity to read the rest of this. Jesus Christ, I can't speak. I am interested about these call bards. The original mining facility is no longer standing, I've been destroying the collapse of 1918. Though the new facility, outfitted with all cutting edge technology and industry, is in itself a fine example of practical construction. The first iteration of the mining camp was tr a true product of its time, a few photographs exist of its interest in pink back in a different era. One can still visit the site in the original Scarlet Coal Mine, though all that remains are a few abated tunnels closed off to the public. I guess uh, just the memorial hospital. That's, uh, first used the field hospital during the Civil War. It was named as Silas Scarlet's eldest son, who perished in the bloody conflict. Oh, since then, it still stands at the end of what is now the residential district of Scarlet Hollow, and has served the health of community for over a hundred years. In the late 1800s, as the town proposed from a coal boom. When coal boom, additions were built into the house that was opened as a change of air clinic for any prestigious clientele from around the world. They believed that fresh mountain air would do them all well as Scarlet Hollow became a tourist destination for patients of all inflictions. The clinic still operates to this day as a doctor's office and still stands at the bottom of the cultural significance. Interesting. The I didn't read that correctly. Situated at the edge of Scarlet Hollow's farmlands, the Tremaine, the Tremaine homestead was one of the earliest settlements in Scarlet Hollow, predating even the town's famous coal mines. For many decades, the Tremaine family, family maintained the largest farm in Scarlet Hollow, but a break in family lead lead them to split and land in two and the homestead along with it. Despite the many changes made to the two halves of the Tremaine homestead, in the subsequent decades, the original log structures are still visible and maintained to this day. There are undoubtedly the oldest buildings left standing in Scarlet Hollow. So about the first Baptist church. One of the first buildings constructed by the Scarlet family. The Scarlet Hollow First Baptist Church still sits in the original foundation, though the building was constructed and accommodated the influx of citizens during the Scarlet Hollow coal boom and in the late 1800s, attendance were dwindled since the infamous mine collapse in 19, 19, 1918. While holding the building may have not fallen into despair, the simple vaulted ceilings have evoked awe into anyone who entered. Silas Scarlet personally funded the town's hall of destruction as the first mold on a simple on a, on a simple, I don't know what that is, building in in the then small community of Scarlet Hollow. It was stood at the end of Main Street before the Civil War in its white columned edface, edifice, was standing the ravages of the 1860s and continues to stand to this day, a stunning piece of antebellum architecture. After the, oh, that was the end of like that. After the town of Scarlet Hollow switched the, to a dog mayor system, <laughs> The government's in the 1920s, the building has been put to different use, though the upstairs still house the town archives and the special Semarillo house for events with the mayor. So the mayor of Scar Hollow is a dog. That is interesting. Wait a minute. Hmm. Well, that's just the only thing. I mean, you're done here. Let's put the back. A few entries catch your eye. Mothman, a humanoid creature that, let's see, the Jersey Devil, gang sign babies, that's Ginsen, I think, the Bell Witch, Hopskins Goblins, there's the Wampus Cat, Tom, Tommy Knockers, Tally Poe, oh, my bad. All right, let's go by one by one. Mothman, a humanoid creature whose sightings are said to be tied with supernatural events. A Mothman is a large flying creature, generally described as a humanoid with glowing red eyes. It was first spotted in a couple of West Virginia, by a couple in West Virginia in the mid 1960s. <laughs> it's now Ghost Train, and was encountered in the region more times in the following years. 
The Stilford Bridge collapsed in 1967 and has been linked to a series of Mothman sightings. It said the presence of the creature served as some sort of omen or the catalyst that led to disaster. Hmm. This has been said to the important acts by the Mothman. The signs of the script are often taken sign as great misfortune is soon to follow. Interesting. The Jersey Devil. Yeah, I know about this one too. I, I read a few cryptids. Though, um, though the Pine Barrens, uh, the place where the creatures said to be born far from the Alcapurchian wilderness, the size of the Jersey Devil has been documented all throughout the forests of the eastern United States. According to the popular legend, the Jersey Devil was born to a woman named Jane Leeds. Jane Leeds. Leeds, upon realizing she was pregnant with her 13th child, Ha! Huh. And daunted by the oh, I keep pressing right click, pressing right click. But the task of birth yet again, the curse the curse the child in her womb, proclaiming it would be the devil itself. Oh my God! The boy is a normal child and quickly transformed, getting a goat or horse's head, large bat wings, and a forked devil's tail. Well, it's more like a, uh, well, like a fire sign, kicking a. At the family and lashing out with its tail, it flew up at the chimney out of the night, disappearing into the Pine Barrens. Jersey Devil is one of the oldest cryptids in North America history. The sightings span it back through the 1800s, all the way into the origin of the myth in the late 1700s. It's set to move at its incredible speed and is recognized by a higher pitch blood curdling scream. Interesting. I know, I know the Gensu babies, yeah. It's safe to say it was life is hard to. After the Civil War, the land and people's head was ravaged by conflict and many turned unusual industry to go by. This one's very short. One industry is going to Gensi Diggers or Sand, Sand Diggers, as they were coquettishly known, who eked out of the Mirgir, Mia Gear. What is it with these words? Living themselves by digging up the selling wild American Gensen. Best surrounding Sand Diggers, Sand Diggers, uh, were plentiful, but most prominent among them was that the gangsta baby. It was said that you dig up the gangsta root from the night of the new moon, it will cry like an infant and leave blood on the earth when it's torn free. Ugh. The parallels to the European mandrake myths are clear. We can assume that myth arose from the cross pollination from European Euro immigrants. Wow. But perhaps on the night of the new moon, you should go out to dig up some Gensin rune, see if it cries, and check out the earth for its blood. Or it could be the myth spread not by not through legends passed down through immigrant families, but from the unsound experiences of these Apachean foreign foragers. The Bell Witch. I don't know about this one. One of the most famous hauntings in North American history, the Bell Witch was a strange entity that plagued the citizens of the Red River region of Tennessee in the early 1800s. Many strange phenomena has been attributed to the witch through the years, but the most famous was the Haunted Bell family, starting the fam fairly typical haunted, with the unnatural sound echoing through the house after sundown, and the appearance of a strange mammal that no one could identify or capture. Unlike the other hauntings, though, these acts quickly escalated to attacks on the family, and in particular, the daughter, Elizabeth Bell. She was constantly covered in bruises from the spiritual abuse. Oh my god. This man could frequently be heard speaking through the walls in a disabled voice, mocking the family and any visitors. And it eventually escalated to the full blown hallucinations to those dwelling in the Bell house. It's terrible. Oh my god. Though this haunting ended in the early 1800s, it's actively continued in the region in many decades. That's screwed up. It could be that the entities known as Bell Wish may have dwelled in the Well River, River region to this day. Which one do I actually want to read? Oh, um, eh. I'll read about the Wampus Cat. Often linked to the Cherokee legends, some cite the Wampus Cat as originating from origination originating from the story of the woman who sought vengeance against a monstrous cat demon for driving her husband mad she hunted it down by wearing bobcat mask interesting tricked into using its own vile magic on itself freeing the people in a region of evil 
Others say the creature comes with a story of a woman who wore a pelt of a wild cat to witness forbidden hunting riots. Rights, I guess. The hunters on her village gather perform to perform the rites as she watched in secret from underneath a cat's pelt, but was soon discovered. From her indiscretion, she was fused with the pelt and transformed into the creature that was neither human nor cat, forced to wander the wilderness alone, feared by all. Her calls are, no are those of great sadness and serve as a warning to anyone who dares against tradition. I read about the tally, bow. I don't know. There was a hunter who lived in a tiny cabin in the middle of the woods, all alone with his hunting dog. One night after a particular bad week of hunting, both of their stomachs empty, the hunter spied something out of the corner of his eye. While it's multi page, some small creature has gone into the cabin for a hall, and before he could even figure out what it was, he drawn his gun to fight at the thing, saw her guiding his actions. Oh my god. It was but it was quick and ran back to this hide hole out of sight, and its only black tail shut off of the hunter's rifle. Guess it'll have to do, he said to the dog. Threw the tail in the pot to cook for soup. That's really that's sad. He and his dog we ate well that night. Not really. The tail fling fell in them both. How? The hunter crawled into a bed, satisfied, and his dog curled up with his feet. Is this dog going to be dead? Yeah. He woke up with the sound of long nails scraping against wood. Dog nowhere in sight. Only a rumpled spot on the covers where he'd been. And in the gloom, he saw two big yellow eyes staring right at him. I want my tally po. Our high horse cracked in from the darkness. Go away! He screamed at the thing. But I stepped close to him, still shrouded in the darkness. The sound of long claws dragging across the hardwood accompanying its movements. I want my tally po! The creature growled again. I'll get my dog after you, shit! The hunter sp squeaked, his voice catching in the throat in fear. There was no dog to be seen. I want my tally -po. Before the hunter could so much as scream, the creature leapt down from the darkness, long claws towards the hunter. No one is sure what the creature did to him. Oh, the tail grew back. They turned that night. But the next morning, all that remains was the hunter of his hunter, his dog, and his cabin was a chimney. The cabin was a chimney standing alone in the woods. Interesting. I'm done with that. Is that a Digimon thing in the background? Hee <laughs> hee, Gretchen. Uh. Let's go through the veins of Scarlet, the history of Scarlet, all out coal mines. Oh boy, here we go. Forest into retirement by. At age 50, due to the war injury in his time in Indian Wars, exasperated by his short stint, stint serving as a captain of the Confederacy, Silas Scarlet also lost his two elder sons to the bloodless, bloodiest of wars, even his third eldest son, Andrew Jackson Scarlet, to take change, charge of the mine. Under his leadership, the mine proposed undoubtedly in part due to the growth of the railroad industry. Managed to, to evade the coal union for decades, making them one of the most profitable mines in the country. Andrew Scarlet built, finally didn't use his last middle name, built the surrounding town into what is today most expensive stone buildings and oh, a bustling main street and overseeing it all the elegant Scarlet Estate that was until 1985 the largest and finest feat of architecture in the region, culminating the tragic. Collapse in 1918. It was found that Charles Shaw, the co manager of the mine, has loosed security measures to increase production during World War I, resulting in the fatal collapse and the deaths of 160 men and, bo bo men and boys, some young as 10. Oh my god. Casualties include Andrew Jackson Scarlet's son, Theodore, hmm. his brother, Eknach, Eknach the fifth? It's not the fifth Scarlet. Oh, Scarlet, who had taken over the AG followers during the bustling war. The war managed to pull the mine to the brink of ruin, thereby saving the town. So this is how your family made its fortune. Sure. 
Silas Everett Scarlett was born to the Colonial Everett J. Scarlett in 1818. Along with the 12 siblings, he grew up in eastern North Carolina during the tumultuous time in the state's history. And much is known to his life before he joined the army of 1836. Normally, I, or no, I think an old person would just like do through the cryptids and move on. I'm very interested in its writing. They definitely built its own history. It's very interesting. He quickly rose through the ranks, in part due to his father's connections, but also due to the particular ruthlessness for which he received the nickname Bloody Silas Scarlet. Federal government granted the now Captain Silas a tract bounty land in exchange for his servers in the Indian War, and he settled into the hills of North Carolina in 1841. That land would become Scarlet Hollow. It started as a simple log cabin built by Silas's own two hands, occupied by his family of ten, Silas, his wife Mary Joseph Scarlet, and their eight children. Our Mary Joseph, interesting. Logging business brought many workers and fellow landowners into the hills, but it wasn't until Silas discovered rich seams of a coal running underneath the entire region that Scarlet Hollow was really put on the map. You see what a bought the surrounding hillside at the great discount Seth clearly hiding from any new from what the land's true value thus he had all the resources to find Scarlet Hollow's now famous coal mine I'll finish with this one I think I'm done let's check in that's a lot of reading all right if we're going after going what Kanika's mom told us last night I think it ruled out any natural disasters is why I brought Ditchlands here but not nuclear incidents. Looks like our state has its history of those. What about y'all? Find anything? Oh. Or you can spawn a handsome black cat that leaps at the table. That quickly slams his book shut. Oh, hey, Pixel. You might want to get close to your book. He loves to rip up any paper he can find. What a little bastard he looks. <laughs> Don't worry, little guy. I didn't forget your treats. Pixel immediately goes to the town that sells his treats. Sorry, Pixel's bothering you all. Hopefully, he hasn't gobbled up any of our books. He hasn't. He can't stand the thought of people trying to pay attention to anything that isn't him. He decided to let Pixel be. The cat crawls off the table fast asleep. Aww. Alright, I better get back to Shelvin. Let me know if you find anything. Let's talk about the historical bins of Scar Hollow. Oh my god, you read that? That book was assigned as a punishment if we misbehave in school. It's an excellent step eight sleep aid. Not quite a militant of men. <laughs> and unscar the bills at Scar Hollow. Rumor has a nobody has read it from cover to cover. You guys are missing out. That's one of my favorite books here. Such a rich history. Guess we're just kinda we're just kindred spirits, Alec. <laughs> Stella, why are you going to tell me the dog mayor is a dog? <laughs> Tarn, I hope you'd be surprised. Scarlet Hollow has not a human mayor since the 1920s. Yeah, if you were hoping the mayor would might be to help us out here, you're out of luck. Ah, I see. You know, the train main house does. Seems like the only thing here that doesn't have the Scarlet name stamped on it. I think I've been around these parts even longer than your family. Though there are Tremaine's and Callaway's now. I literally, literally split the farmhouse in half that over that sketchum, sketchum, I guess. <laughs> Crutch, you want to look at me like that? Dude, Crutch's soul wasn't the last two Callaway's left. I guess it's just down to four now. I can't imagine what he's going through right now. What happened to the estate? At some point, the hill was built on the star falling apart. I think it's pretty stable at this point, though. Is it? Stella, you've seen the place. And half of it's mostly okay. Why don't you go to church here? 
He's just never really a good pastor around these parts. Now, as long as I've been around, at least. I'm not really much of a church person anyways. Who has the time? Finley gives off weird vibes, too. Not in a fun, haunted way. I'm in the hospital here is named after my family. No one's in the name, but calling it a hospital is generous. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a hospital. Right now, it's a one-woman medi medical clinic. With a series of emergencies that happen these days, we call an ambulance from out of town. That's where Reese and his mom live. He's the town, she's a town doctor. And these days, she doesn't really see a lot of patients. So about the coal mines here? They make visible shutters. I get the cold sweat just thinking about the plain place like that. I feel it for the guys who walk there. I could never. Think of yourself. I love a good crevice. You didn't bust it out of my class for walking. Honestly, that's a good theory. I think that's a good theory. What are the ditches that are coming from the mines? Some sort of subterranean creature. Maybe there's something down there making people sick and changing them. That wouldn't explain how many pictures we saw last night. Extra occasionally a miner goes missing, but we saw a dozen of those things. I mean, it's definitely not mutated miners, but if there's some sort of parasite down there, maybe it got some of the animals that spread in the woods. Now that I think about it, Wayne's a miner. Maybe that ties him into all this. No, it sounds ridiculous, but one of the plausible explanations we've got so far. I don't feel comfortable with how I said it. I mean, to be fair, we got to the point. What if there's something toxic in the mines poisoning the town? He seems sick. That creep who keeps coming around Mom's tea room? He snuck up last night, calling Alec by name. Yeah, there's something, there's something wrong with him. I thought some more parasite down the mines. Maybe this affected Wayne. Maybe a fain affected the walk below our wife. Ah, huh, that could work. Mines are an obvious common threat between the research between Wade and the old collapse. It's the smartest place to start investigating. Good idea. That's a lot of minor mines really and stuff in my notes. You can book around and find anything anything weird. Just to clarify, you two are suggesting we go down some some of the miners, right? We're not poking around on preparing in the actual mines, right? Right? Yeah, totally. 100 percent I would never. I wouldn't. I don't even have a good reason to go down there. Good. Let's keep it that way. You know how I feel about mines? I promise, Neeks. We're going to get questions from the miners. And if the questions give us good reason to poke around, say, a cool abandoned cool mine, then we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We can cross that bridge when we come to it. I am not going underground. I'm just messing with you. We'll stick to the surface. Yeah, and hopefully we can find what's wrong with Wayne while we're at it. <sighs> Would she get more pissed? All right, while we're doing this, let's stay at our best to stay on the radar. I'm not hot water enough with water with Tabitha as it is. It sounds like a good idea. Would be super sneaky. I promise I can I can I can even keep lookout. Look at us going after Caper together. I missed this. I missed it too. I mean sure there's under best circumstances, but I'm so wrapped up in them running a store, I didn't realize how much I'm missing up missing being able to hang out with you. Though there is something missing. Reese. I really miss that dude. I can't believe how long it's been since we've seen each other. Have you seen him lately? Nope, I tried to plan, but he's been too sick. I didn't realize it was getting so bad, that poor guy. You know, I could just pop over and surprise him. He seemed excited to meet Alec. I mean, maybe he'll finally get him to his little cave. Hell yeah, let's do it. Alright, let's roll out. See ya, Oscar. Let me know if we run into Rosalina. Thanks, guys. I'll keep y'all posted. 
looked Oscar. Reese's home stands at the edge of the forest. That is creepy. That is, I don't like that. Ends in the forest wall and isolating buffers cushioning the rest of the town in the unending wilderness. Unlike several of the entries in the historical his buildings of Scarlet Hollow, this one still looks most likely it didn't in the book. Reese, it's Stella. I brought some buddies too. Shh, not so loud. She's still, he's still sleeping. Can I help you with something? Open the doorway, so directly into your eyes. You can practically feel her simmering irritation washing over you. Mommy, sorry. Mommy, sorry. Hi, Dr. Kelly. We were wondering if it could be okay if Reese could come out and out. Nothing's threatening us, we promise. I'm not going to wake him up. If he's sleeping, he's probably needs it. Whatever you do plan is probably beyond what he can manage right now, anyways. Oh no, poor Reese. It's been so long since we either has gone to the chance to hang out with them. I'm sure he and Alec would get along super well, too. Hi, I'm Alec. Vivian's kid? I know who you are. The way she avoids looking at you, she speaks makes you feel like you've done something wrong, even though you're pretty sure you've done nothing at all. Reese's mom turns back in the house, signing. Sorry. Sorry, that was a little rude. Oh, sorry, that was a little rude. You know, just want to hang out with Reese, and he misses the both of you, too. <sighs> Time to finish her thought. He's usually feeling his best around mid-afternoon. Why don't you come tomorrow? We have something or some supper. Y'all have y'all hang out for a bit. I don't promise you'll you'll be perky. I'm sure I'm bright in the spirit to see you two again. I suppose you could come too, Alec. That'd be great. I could bring a side dish, maybe double eggs. Did he still eat those? Oh, no eggs. Well, oh, eggs are a little too much for him. They don't settle well. You can leave the cookie to me. I know what he can handle. Okay, I'll bring soda then. That's not... Okay, yes, fine. You can bring soda. Nothing with caffeine. Ginger ale, preferably. Oh, and leave the dog at home. She might cheer him up. You know how those therapist dogs in the house... No dogs. Thanks so much, Dr. Kelly. The sub out of you now. See you later. See you now. Dr. Kelly nods in acknowledgement and quickly shuts the door. The sound of several lock locks clicking into place hard and... Mm. God, that woman makes me so nervous. I remember she used to be so nice and carefree when we were kids. She always had the best stickers when we had shots. Maybe she's just stressed about Reese. Maybe she's just nice to kids. Either way, I guess it's the three of us. In a drive? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I don't like the thought of going up without the van. Well, I'll take my shortcut then. It wouldn't be long to get there. You all gonna tag along. Don't worry, I won't be offended if you ride the ride with Cal. I'm sure you're probably sick of the woods. Either way, it works for me. I'll, I'll walk with Stella. Interesting. We'll meet you there. The woods are calm and serene compared to the last night. But you can't help but get the feeling the danger lurks behind the trees. Hey, thanks for coming along with us. With me and Gretchen, I mean. But why have it seemed too cold about everything that happened last night? Truth is, I'm barely keeping myself together. I don't know how to let it out. You could die out there last night. I can't help thinking about it might be my fault. If only I've dived with a flashlight. If only I didn't drag you along into the woods. Bell pauses, searching for what to say. This guilt bullying inside, under my skin. That's the only way I could process what happened is by turning off the part of me that feels things. When I'm around other people, it's like I think of Duke dying just as the thing that happened. Like it's just part of another video. Because if I actually admit to other people I feel something, that I admit to for myself what happened is my fault. <sighs> That's fucked up. Of course it's not your fault. It's nobody's fault. It's nobody's fault. Your aggression of going to the woods at night dozens of times by yourselves. Nothing like this happened before. Like you have known. Thanks, Alec. I think I really needed to hear that. Bob takes your brace for the neurotic call it with you and Stella. Stella and Gretchen all whirling around the face of sort of sound. Oh, it's a bird. 
Uh oh. Whoa, calm down, girl. It's just a bird. The same probably goes to the two of us. <laughs> so we're a little on edge. Let's hurry out to the mine. We shouldn't go any farther. I don't trust this. I don't trust this. Oh, it's fine. Nika casually leaves against her van as you can still emerge from the woods. Hey. Y'all have a good walk? Yeah, it was great. I mean, not that you were missing out or anything. You didn't run into those creatures, did you? Nope. That makes sense. They're probably nocturnal. I don't know if I should feel free. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lucky Gretchen. <laughs> I don't know if I should ever leave or disappointed. I'm gonna make made her as derpy as possible, huh? We're all here. What's the plan? I guess we we'll go talk to people. I guess so. I should probably look out for duty. I've been a bit of a pers persona non grata in the mines. Tap. Tabitha. Yeah, I might have tried to sneak in to talk to her in the time or too, too many. Gretchen makes the extra hand hard to be sneaky. we will probably be less likely to cut off caught if one of us is snooping around down there. I've got this. You'll do great. So the plan. You know the cheesy old rom-coms where somebody wears an earpiece on the first date? Oh, you have some kind of surveillance set up in the back of your van that I didn't know about? What? No. <laughs> I have a pair of earbuds that's a really good mic. You could just do a group call. You can hand a pair of earbuds, that's smart. I can feed your, quest feed your questions if you get stuck. And still I can give you a heads up if Tabitha's headed your way. Dang, I miss doing this sort of thing with you. You're so thorough. Aw, oh, thanks, I do my best. Guess we start part ways and we start to call, yeah? Stalin and Kanika break off. Leave you alone at the entrance of the mines. Phone buzzes. Hey! Can you hear us? Try saying something. Something. Stalin and Kanika chuckle at the end of the line. Alright, cool. Nothing to do now but enter the work site. Here we go. Pass through the unlocked fence in the property in Scarlet Hollow Mine. Here we go. Look at all these people. Look at all these fine, fine people. If I go straight to find my cousin, that's not going to be the smartest idea. Because I don't think. Other person. I'm in. Alright, Morpheus. Good to know. It was the nearest group of miners, a blonde woman, a sh broad shoulder man, and an old timer. The universe identifies Harrison, Davis, and Zax. You got a reason to be bothering us? Do you know anything about a guy named Wayne? Yeah, we know him. We know him. He's such a cut up. Missed that dude. Why are you talking about him in the past tense? I met him last night. Good question. Wait, wait, what? No way. Isn't the guy y'all saw was, um, I uh, guess he ain't. And he hasn't skipped town, huh? A pretty unexpected turn in the vents, if you ask me. What a relief. Thought something awful happened to one too poor guy. No, this is interesting. At least I think it's interesting. I'll, I'll just put it. Oh, nope. Don't want to do that. What do you think happened to him? What are you, some kind of cop? I'm tapping with this cousin. I'm here for the funeral. My straighten up suddenly very serious. Sorry, I didn't know. I thought you were maybe one of them environmentalists or... Yeah, sorry for the trouble. Hey, make sure to tell her I a great boss, okay? I'm Zax, that's Davis, and here's Harris. You don't know nothing about what happened to Wade, you hear? Also, she works for them. I didn't even put that together. Is 
say anything weird lately? Nope, nothing at all. Make sure to tell your cousins that, okay? Maybe letting them know you're related to Tabitha was a good idea. Yeah. 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 Say anything weird lately? Am I just looking you up and down? Weird how? People getting sick, like more than usual? Nope, nothing like that. I feel fizz and ox. We have a good work conditions in the mines. Our health is whole, wholly looked after. Have you heard any weird noises coming from the woods? Not a peep. We're on the ground most of the day though. You know, I heard something unusual the other night. Thought it might have been an owl or something, but didn't sound right. It was an owl. You're just not used to local wildlife yet. Have you run into any weird animals? Nope. You've been talking to the You've been talking to the townie? The was been the boss gave a life back lifetime ban to. Are they talking about me? Yeah, she's like a Bigfoot YouTuber or something. Hey, video sucks. That's pretty good. Yep, that's me, all right. Oh, that's so sweet. But you know, now I think about it, it's pretty weird. I haven't been seeing the animals at all lately. Used to be all sorts of critters, and so now there's mostly birds. This is your first year up, ain't it? Not just used to seasons changing. All the animals are hibernating, you know? That's all. Oh no, she got a point. I've been up there five years now. I've never liked this before. <laughs> Maybe it's global warming then. I think they're calling the climate change now. Got a couple other questions. Actually, that's all. Thanks. Bye. Walk away from the miners. Yeah, best I did not to say I'm related. Maybe it was just me, but they seem to think Wayne is dead, right? It wasn't just you. I mean, they'll probably ask with the same questions, but it's best to head over to the next group of miners. A flash of moment of property stops your tracks. There's something lurking in the shadows to your right. Where? Bad judgment. You face to turn it. Turn to face it. What the fuck? You shouldn't be here. It's dangerous. Hi, Wayne. Hey, what's uh, what's that happening? You don't have to be afraid of me. Stay home. Wait for a week to end. Don't keep putting yourself at the path of danger. This is all I ask. Or you can say another word. The figure's gone. Yeah, like you're still there. You're just a bit static from you. Oh, don't mind me. A new friend just stopped by to say hello. Whoa, I thought I thought I saw you talk to someone down there. Are you okay? You told me to stay in the estate for the rest of the week. That I'd be safe there. Why do you tell me that? What the hell is that supposed to mean? You must be, must be threatening you, right? The plot thickens. Do I have to talk to her about this? Is this a safe idea? When he's trying to leave me to make me leave just means they're on the right track. I'm not about to break back down. Oh, I'm so brave. Heck yeah, Alec, we've got your back. Oh, these guys. Hey there, can we help you with something? Do you ever you know a man named Wade? Wayne? Wayne? You mean Sam Wade? What are you asking him about him for? Hey, have you seen him? I heard he was he went missing. Dead, more like. No, come on, man. There's no way. I mean, he just die. I don't know. Why don't you ask his girlfriend? Yikes! Do you think? No, no way. Just saying, he wasn't exactly the first fellow to fall for uh, charms. 
Lots of heartbreaks in a woman's history. Lots of jilted ex-lovers, if you catch my drift. Dane. Dane, what were they talking about? I told him not to get involved with her. I told him. Have you ever seen anything out of the ordinary lately? Weird how? Odd noises in the woods? Nothing but sweet house. Have you people, have people getting, getting sick? The boss looks like a, looks out for hell. Any animal, weird animals? Strange questions, we don't exactly got out much. What does that have to do with Wayne? It's all on the front. Thanks. Anything else? Thanks for the help. Don't mention it. Let's pack it in, boys. Back to work. Should we check in? Just a heads up. The only group I see out there are pretty close to the main office. Might still be worth talking to them. But I don't know if I could give you all that much warning if Tabitha comes out. <sighs> I think talking to her about this is a bad idea. I want to try to talk to the last group of miners. Good luck. Going around asking questions, huh? You don't look like you're from the inspector's office. Have you noticed anything strange around here lately? All kinds of weird stuff happens in the hills. What sort of weird do you mean? Noises from the woods? All the time. Island screaming, all sorts of fiendish caterwauling. Probably just screech owls and bobcats, you old goat. Might be, might not be. But I heard something the other night that sent me fear of God shoving down my spine, I'll tell you. I'll leave it at that. Any weird animal sightings? Saw a raccoon with an old tumor last week. Spooked me something, something awful. That's nature for real. Not always pretty. People getting sick? I mean, some of the old miners, sure, but I can't call them. Not unusual. That's all in the front. Sure. That's all. Thanks for the help. My pleasure. Um, I like, I think we got a problem. Oh, hey. What the hell are you doing here? Ah, oh, crap. Good luck. Sorry, Alec. Hey, that's our cue. Oh, no. You shouldn't be here. This place is dangerous. Why can't you just stay in the estate and stop sticking your nose where it doesn't belong? What is this ridiculous thing you do in your ears? Are you recording my employees? Are you trying to record me? I'm going to snatch the earbuds and throws them to the ground. Typical phone addicted city dweller. Ugh. Cotton, I have a meeting in five minutes. I can't even drive you back. Hey, look, I don't want you wandering anywhere else. Just stay here for an hour. I can't get back to the estate as soon as my meetings wrap up. Can you please do that for me? <sighs> oh, no, 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 no. You got the one to talk. Got a lot of explaining to do. What the hell are you talking about? What's going on with these layoffs? First of all, I did not invite you to here to snoop around and judge me. Second of all, do you even know what it takes to work on small business? Do you even know how much people to work to their minds? Over a hundred. Sometimes I have to make a difficult decision to broke to pack the bulk of these jobs. Do you think pointing out the coal industry is falling apart is some kind of gotcha? Of course, I had to make some cuts. Ugh, I should have just shouldn't have justified myself to you. You get my meaning. Just stay here until I get back. Don't move a muscle. Talk to you in an hour. Eh, no. I don't feel right about that. I'm sorry, Tabitha. What's that even mean? What's a good sorry if it'll keep everything in your power to stress me out? Ugh, sorry. Sorry, disappointing. This be your last night, Tabitha. I wouldn't have dreamed of doing anything else to violate your boundaries. What are you going to do next? Actually kill someone in town? You gotta cook. Just stay here until I come to you. Don't move a muscle. I collect you in an hour. 
Sorry, I wasn't able to give you a bit of warning. You good? I've been better. What the? You interrupted by a sudden movement according to your eye. A girl carrying a butter snack pops through the hall and the fence just being over the crest hill. Yeah, I think I saw Rosalina. Wait, really? What's she doing there? I'm going after her. Good idea. Watch out, I catch up with you. Rush over the hill trying to get your bearings. The sound of activating mine and find being into the distance. Lizzie is nowhere to be found, but dusty footprints toward the nearby mine. She didn't. I guess the old Maxwell place didn't cut off the secret hangout spot these days. But the Charmon? I must have shot that like a hundred years ago. After the collapse, I killed over a hundred people. And here I thought Stella was going to be the one to drag me into the abandoned coal mine. I guess we should go after her, right? Yep. Yeah, let's head in before someone gets hurt. Whoa, you sure you want to tackle on, Nix? Alec and I can handle on us on our own. Yeah, I'm sure. Much as I hate confined spaces, I'm not about to let Lucina get hurt in there. Even if it means I have to go on the ground. <laughs> Why? Grit, the, the artist. What the fuck? What the fuck is that? The fuck are you? Stella so disappeared into the mines. Will you follow briefly? Wonder if which type of the know about this. At this rate, I have to tell her, right? I feel like I should. What is that? You pull out your phone and dial your cousin. What is it? You know I'm in the meeting. The kid just snuck up to Shaw Mine. I feel like you should know. What? Are you serious? Why do you think this is happening to me? Ugh, whatever. I'll head there as soon as I can. Just stay where you are. Away from me, all right? God, I don't even know why I'm trying to reason with you. It's like you'll listen. I called you as a courtesy. I'm not going to wait for you. I swear to God. I'm sorry, but my mind's made up. Deep breath, following your new friends in the mind. Inside the mines are warmer than you expected. The air thick and wet. The ceiling hangs much lower than you are at all, forcing you to forcing you and your companions to hunch over. Your legs bent in a painful squat as you begin to navigate in the maze of corridors. Hey, you made it. Told you she would. Told you she would. I just wanted to give a quick call to count for the 401. You didn't. I was hoping we'd be able to get Rosalina out of here without calling the cops on her or us. Now that we are not trying to have a rest us or trespassing. Oh, I wouldn't worry about her calling the cops. I've snuck into the mines dozens of times. She's never called the cops on me. That's because you two have a weird thing. I wish I had that actually hates me and believes I'm feeling. Leave me the feeling mutual. Oh, I'm mad to get the answer all here. We'll find Rosalina in no time. I feel like it was a good idea too. The deeper you progress in the mines, the heavier the air becomes. The cold dust hangs in the thick clouds around you, even though the place was abandoned over a century ago. Jesus, it's cramped down here. Don't else feel else shells feel tight? Yeah. Abandoned mines are way more claustrophobic than other people expected them to be. And this was real bad, you know, because the children miners, or should I just say minor miners, shut up. Nigley visually shudders. Okay, I'm not superstitious. But there's one way to make sure you're haunting and cracking jokes about dead children laborers while walking in their graves. What can I say? Do my attempt to experience whatever I go. I actually snuck down here a few times to try to get some good footage. Out of my ghost hunting phase. Jesus, Stella, the things you do for your viewers. Did you find anything? I wish. If the only place Scarlet Hall was actually haunting, it'd be this mine, hands down. All I got was dust in my lungs, a couple of false alarms. Mm-hmm. Rush is overhead. Oh my god, what was that? The mine's going to class, we're all die here, aren't we? That sounds lonely. That's just how the wind sounds down here. You sound so disappointed. It just brings back memories of my last four year. Where I am, into the depths. 
Every time I thought I'd finally found a spooky ghost there, one of them being non ghostly explanation. Like a wildlife, or for instance. Stella turns a flesh I so I wonder what would have happened if I never stuck with Stella. Those guys getting real good last time. I was here alone. Oh my god, there's bats down here? I'm gonna have rabies, aren't I? I'm gonna get rabies to die and my mind collapse. You know about okay, Neeks? Yeah, sorry. I'm a little on edge. I just stopped in mid since I thought there's just knock echoing way through the deeper in the mine. Okay, what was that? That was. I have no idea what that was. Did that sound knocking to you guys? Sounds like swag shifting somewhere deep in the mines. We should be careful. Could be. Or it's. Maybe it's Tommy Knockers. It's there on old Cornish myth. They have a knocking sound that you can hear sometimes here in the mines right after before it collapse. Stella! Some say the knocking's a warning. Others say it's pierced themselves breaking the mines. Not helpful. A little dispenser extra time poking around down here. Maybe it's got to do with a mystery. Maybe you're interrupted by the second, much less distant sound of camp being popped open. Okay, now that wasn't Tommy Knockers. Came from the f this way. Follow me. You're not. You and Kanika follow Stella through the mine. It was a hangout spot. You breathe a sigh of relief as a tight passes through your small cavern. Cavern. Oh, that's Rosalina. Oh, she's so cute. A group of teenage of teens turned to stare at you with annoyance. What the hell are you all doing in here? What the hell are you doing in here, you creeps? Are you stalking us? Yeah, creeps! I said that, Ale Alexis. Violent and echo and yell into the Grand Canyon. <laughs> what are you, five? <laughs> we gonna diss some kid? <laughs> If I wanted to echo the Grand Canyon, what are you, five? <laughs> I'm 15, you loser. Who even are you? That's Alec, Tybee's cousin. What's his name? Your dad's worried sick about you. If you were asking me, he was right to worry. What the hell are you thinking of hanging on the old mine? A good idea. Is the Maxwell place not strange enough? Because uh, no one usually comes down here. Duh. Everyone here is hanging out at the Maxwell place now. So I had to find a new hideout, which you instantly found. I guess we have to have a more secluded place where we can just be ourselves. I can't believe your dad sent people to follow you, Rosalina. That's messed up. I think that qualifies as harassment. You're right, Becca. It is messed up. I don't need him to tell me where I can be. You could at least check in. He knows you're not dead. He loves you and he worries about you. Is he, he's not really asking for much. Don't you kids have school tomorrow anyways? It's fall break. And yeah, we're not kids. Yeah, we're teens. Those kids starving freaking haters? Where do you even get those? Those are the teens that avoid eye contact. The quiet one back tries to melt into the cabin wall. Oh, oh no. I know that it's in you, Miles. That better not be you. Yeah, whatever. It's me. What are you even doing here? Back is right. Sends to me you're stalking and harassing and all and all of that. You're supposed to be mining the store. Not like anyone goes out coming in Tuesdays. Mom's fine there, so it's fine. Ari's starting uncomfortably around the cavern as Kanika tears to her brother. It's not fine. It's really not fine. Why do I always have to be the responsible the one? Do you know what I would give to be a cash free as you? That's school so you can have a chance to live your life. This is what you're doing through it? Why would dad think if we could Come see this. Stealing booze from family store to dick around in the abandoned mine. Dad's dead, Kanika. But if you were here, he disappointed and you wound up such a bossy jerk. Who cares if we're having a canned margarita somewhere in no way suspended to bother us?
Miles, don't try to twist us around your sister. You're down here drinking with the kids as young as 13. That's messed up. Whatever. Hey, don't talk about us like we are here. Yeah, we can hear you. Alexis, don't butt in. I'm trying to make a point. We're perfectly capable of taking care of ourselves. We don't need a bunch of sad 20-somethings. Okay, so we are 20. Telling us what we can, what we cannot do. Sad 20-somethings? Hey, I'm not sad. Where'd you get that idea? Ugh. Uh, I ran in a clickbait YouTube channel where you run around in the woods chasing not, nothing but this extremely sad. Anyway, my dad is actually a foreman of a continuous mining facility. He says that they only abandoned this area because there wasn't enough coal left. Not because it was dangerous or anything, so we hang out anytime we want. Correction, your father was a foreman of a continuous mining facility. We'll see if he even has a job tomorrow morning. What? Oh shit. Is that Bugs Bunny? <laughs> shit. Oh hey Tabby. Unique size. It's probably for the best that she's here. Do not really understand what bullying up the entrance is supposed to mean. That means it's closed, condemned, not fit for human use. Oh come on. This place is way sturdy. Check this out. Teen is bound to himself with the slaps of straw on the ceiling. Oh, that was the knocky we heard earlier. Oh my god, Zane, cut it out. You're embarrassing us. Uh, I'm sorry for Zane's behavior. I don't think he realizes how extremely, how extremely eighth grade it is to jump up and hit things. No, no offense, Rosalina. None taken. The other eighth graders are totally immature. Not like you, Rosalina. You're chill and smart, too. Enough! The damage is already done. Now leave. I'm tired of people in this town dragging my cousin out head along into danger. I can't believe I actually gave a tap without a bath, but then this is the worst place I've ever been in my entire life. I would like to see the sun again before I die. But come on, you guys. It's not a big deal. We're used to dangerous stuff all the time. And I still do dangerous stuff now. I mean, I don't like particularly situation or an interesting thing, but... Why would you bring that up? <laughs> Outside of that, why are we going to tell him right now? I don't know what you think about the situation. Stella, I own this mine. It is entirely within my rights to tell them to leave. Much like it's entirely my own rights to tell you to leave. Is your lifetime ban for my mind not clear enough to message for you? Hell yeah, Tabitha, tear her to shreds. Tabitha shouts back into furious glare. Look, we just wanted to give Resin a good time. Her life, home life sucks right now. Yeah, tell him about where you had to sleep, Rosalina. You've been living in the library for the last couple of weeks. That's when we can stay in our house. They got a hot plate and a couple of coats sitting in the back room. It's actually a pretty sick setup. No, it's not, Zane. Rosalina deserves better. I don't care about your home life. If you're going to the underage drinking, go do it in the woods. Just get off my property. Tabitha? Look, Rosalina, I'm sure Oscar has a good reason for all that. He's a good guy and he cares about you. He thinks our house is haunted. Oh. Wait, what? I should care. And I should care because... Because it's such a bullshit excuse. I bet you couldn't afford it anymore and lying to you to save face. What a coward. Becca, I don't think you can, like, say that about other people's families. Isn't that, like, bullying or something? Shut up, Zane. Back up. He said it's haunted. I can't believe you didn't mention it to me. I could investigate. <laughs> Shut up. There's no ghost, Stella. It'd be cool if there was, but Becca's right. I just wish he'd be honest with me and tell me what's going on. It's like he doesn't think I can handle it like I'm a little kid. Ugh, you're all children. And now that you realize how good you have it. Back in the day, each of us had to... Each and every one of you would have been pulling 12-hour shifts in the exact mine. If it went for children labor, the loss of five of you would have been an actual character. Exactly. Rosalina's not a mature anyway, so she still sleeps with stuffed animals. That doesn't mean she's not mature. I still have pork chop, you know. I rest my case. Wait, what did you say about child labor? Ugh, Tabitha, just, just don't, just don't do that. 
I'm not going to weigh on on this. This is between you and your dad. And the two of you should talk about any weather isn't here. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, if Rosalina's house is haunted, we should break in like Ghostbusted or something. That was pretty rare to me. Whatever gets you delinquent out of my mind. Oh my god, Zane. He can't bust a cuff. There's no ghost. And Rosalina lives there. She can't break into her own house. And there's no ghost that you know of. I bet we can figure out the bust if he was just actually real, which it isn't real. Well, problem solved. You know, Rosalina, you can always stay over at my house and still a ghost bust your place. You have finished basement and pull out couch. I ain't even talking about this thing. It's not a thing. There's no ghost. I don't care. I can't believe I wasted this much time trying to argue with children. I'm washing my hands off of this and calling the cops before I need to leave before they show up. You hear that, Miles? We're leaving. I suggest you rest of the kids leave this empty mind before someone gets a black clown or get crushed by the rocks. Or meet any of the terrible fates people tend to meet in abandoned mines. Oh, shit. Okay, can you get disrupted by a pair of thunderous knocks? That wasn't me, I swear. What was it? Come on, Stella. You don't know all this perfect natural explanation for scoring my noises. It's time knockers for sure. I mean, this came down here. We gotta check it out. Stella. I know, I know. Weird stuff has been happening around here the past few days. What if there's a chance to actually get a solid lead? Say, it could be no higher. You have no sense of supervision. I want you. I want you out of here, Stella. Oh, come on, Tabby. You can come on too. I was gonna do something spooky. Can't be in. <laughs> no one's gonna deep in the mine. Nobody is staying in the mine. You're all leaving. Please, does this happen before my heart gives out? It'd be fun, Neeks. It will not. Here's the over Stella's. Here, over the sound of Stella playing in, Tabitha has something like shuffling her feet on stone, whispering in mischievous teens. Why are the cops? Oh. You try to back her gone. Rosalina actually over in a small tunnel cover. She freezes you notice her. You look at Rosalina. Ah oh, fuck. <laughs> well, glad I did <laughs> glad I saved there. I'll go in that hall. Okay, sorry. I was gonna hang back. Ugh, I knew you weren't cool enough to hang out with us, Rosalina. Come on, Alexis. We can wait. Have more fun without her. All right. Are you kidding me? What were you thinking? What were they thinking? I don't know. I'm so sorry. Unbelievable. Wow, Kanika. Maybe if you weren't such a scared of the dark or whatever, you would have noticed them sneak off. I know it's the snake off and like I've been zoning out for the whole time we've been here. Ugh, we must have squeezed with a child. Just, I was like, tunnel. Yeah. Hey, I was wondering where that goes. I've been able to get, a, get these hips through there. Tell us, stop sneaking into my minds. Please, I'm literally begging you. If only all the tunnels on here were wide enough for adults, we'd all really be done with this little mess. But no, we just have to have to remember this of the bygone area. Uh, didn't you just just talk about how trying labor was a good in the old days a bit ago? I was trying to get you to leave my mind. I can shut back up on the other side of the tunnel. We're not about to let you come in here, ruin our good time. The mines are safe. I've been here a million times. Yeah, if Becca says we're safe, then we're totally safe. Also, sorry, Wesley, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll just, whatever. Come on, Alexis. I know a cool spot this way. Okay, I think I know where the tunnel rejoins with the mines. I'll go look for them. I want each one of you to take note of the fact that I'm doing that. If those idiots get themselves lost and die, I'm not letting them find the family sue me into the ground. You really are those priorities right now? Yeah, yeah, I'm wrong about that. I want the rest of out of my mind. Except for you, Alex. I'm not letting you out of my sight. Yeah, sure. I could never fit in the tunnel anyways. They have crossed barrier that I cannot. So my time here is up. But only because Stella promised a good hunt tomorrow. Whatever. I'm just doing my di dailies anyway. The service down here sucks. How about you, girl? 
Are you, are you sure you don't want me to come along? Then we can help get Beck and Alexis to leave. Don't mind me ask you twice. It'll be fine, Rosalina. I think your dad would kill me if we let you stand here any longer. Okay. Can I at least wait outside? Yeah, we can wait outside together. No, you're not about to wheeze your way into the Stella. Uh, come on, Tabby. I've been here done. I could totally help out. <laughs> that face. Of the size. Ah, let's not get rid of you, is there? Fine. I won't waste time arguing. Um... I read a lot of stories about cave rescuers writing their own breeze, their own rescues. Are we bonding off more than we can chew? Should we get more professionals down here? I am a professional. I also have resolved this issue without a word getting into possible again. I don't want any deal angry parents trying to sue me of their own negligence. Inspiring. I know, right, Alec? It'd be fun and safe. Yeah, that's true. All right, let's do this. Sure. Let's not linger any longer than we have, shall we? Want me to get Gretchen with me? I don't know if it'd be easy to cover ground after without her. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the best. I don't want to repeat last night. Who knows when to do anything, do any climbing. Aw, I'll see you on the other side. Hopefully soon. Sure, we won't be long. Go. Cool. Get ready to bust some ghosts tomorrow. Alex, I'm, Alex, I'm sorry. Kanika, Miles, Zane, and Rosalina head towards the entrance of the mines, leaving you, Tabitha, to find remaining teens. All right, no dawdling. We have to catch up with them. We go this way. Stand aside, exchange a glance at Tabitha's fetch it forward. Right, you deep into the mine. As the three of you deeper into the mine, you hear echoes of conversation bounce across the walls. Eka, why are we doing this again? I, th I thought you thought Tabitha was, like, really cool. Why are you trying to get her mad? Uh, we're doing this because because Tabitha is really cool. Doesn't let anyone boss her around. We can't let her boss us around. Well, you hear that, Tabby? Someone thinks you're cool. Can't believe she used to hang out with nobody like Stella. Hey. I don't know. I think I'm sort of cool. I like the river river running radio. Oh come on! She doesn't even have a sponsor. The year doesn't have a sponsor. I mean, not yet, but I'm talking to meat rice. What? I'm plenty of ads from donations. How's it feel to have a teen girl that thinks you're cool, Tabitha? I feel nothing about it. The opinions of children don't interest me. Oh no, you kind of hesitated there. You're reading into things that aren't there, Stella. I just... Just because your livelihood revolves around what people think you don't mean, I care about what people think of me. Congratulations on your sponsor, though. It's a big deal. They're like a uh, every big podcast. Thank you, thank you. It's like they have a really big step at the channel. I just respect her didn't say all the things she said tonight. She's just mean. It had nothing to do with you. You ever, you've seen how you, she's treated everyone to, I ain't, except Tabitha. Yeah, I guess you're right. Surprised you ever don't have thicker skin about Stella. You never struck me as someone who let people's opinions bother you. If it didn't, I wouldn't have tried to so hard to keep you off my property. Well, you know you don't mean it. I know you don't mean it. Agree to disagree. Quietly press on. I don't really care. <laughs> Another knock closer interrupts your thoughts, followed by another, followed by another. Is this me? Or was a knock came from the same direction as this kid's? It's not just you. I really don't like the knocking. Calm down. Calm down, Alex. It's just mine sounds. Did, did you see that? But no, it's just a shadow. There's no reason to get freaked out. Like, I swear I saw something. Shut up. There's nothing down here. Stop trying to scare me.
We're getting closer. Let's keep moving. Let's see progress statement in the mine, and knocks grow more frequent. It's still distant, but it's much lighter than before. The tunnels end abruptly in front of you. A century old ladder is the only way forward. The doctors beyond, you can still hear the echoes of terrified teens, the panic arguing bouncing down the pitch black dark corridors. Okay, we need to leave. This isn't fun anymore. This is plenty fun. I know you say that because you don't want to hang out with the darky crush of yours. She's an eighth. She's an eighth grader. Because this isn't about Rosalina. I know you hear that knocking. And here we are. The tunnel call through the passes through the chamber below. It sounds like they're still down there. I've never seen. I've never been this far in. Congratulations, Stella. You got what you wanted. Time of the ghost with the ladder disappears over the edge. Hey, let's do this. Okay, just climb down. How much it was an option just to not go? Hey, kids. Oh, great. The adults are here. Thanks, Alexis. Real one. Real nice. Okay, is it to feel like you're better than other people important to you that's worth being buried alive over? What? What are you talking about? Give me a break. The whole time you've been down, you've been nothing but tear down every single person around you. The only people who, who do that are people who are afraid of themselves. Leave. Now. I... Whatever. This is a funny more. Fine, we'll leave. But thanks, Alec. Wow, good job. As back in through the minds, the black chamber before you draws your focus. The voices around you, those teens and your companions sound odd, distant. There is something in the darkness before you that much louder, but you don't hear it. You don't hear it, but you hear a chest. Feeling a chest, a desperate need to receive to be perceived. Why am I doing this? Hey, hey, you're right, Alec? Bear witness. What do you think you're doing? Get away from there! Because it drives you towards you, not before the light of your phone illuminates the chamber. There it is. Whoa. Whoa. Alec. Alec, you alright? Thank God you're alive. I thought look at a siege or something, and you were tapping it could just conked out. Fine. Ugh. You can barely open your eyes. You're not fine. Neither of you have moved a muscle. I want you to sing yourself when you're still here, covering from whatever it was. I'm gonna get out of here, then I'm going to get you both through some help. I'll be back soon, I promise. Don't die on me, alright? You fade back into consciousness as you continue climbers of the pit, intent on your rescue. What the fuck? Raising the elbows, headed towards the. I mean the visions you're surrounding coming back to your focus. Your head throbs as the knock continues. Now magnitude's more intense than ever. What the fuck is going on? You help but notice timber struts around you, trembling. <laughs> able to strike by invisible blows with each knock. They're all stand between you and there's tons of rock on your head. It suddenly seem terribly fragile. God, that knocky's not helping my headache. What the hell just happened? I remember you driving towards me. This, this, did you know something might happen? I've seen horror movies. You're lucky you were about to wander off and get yourself killed. I want you to have my sight, not down here. Hey, cave okay, having shakes with this little rock fall. I don't know what the hell is up with the knocking. The sound of my collapse. Quick! Up the ladder! Climb like hell. This way, come on! Because it moves with the wisdom you expect for someone who spent their entire life around coal mines. All right. But she brought it to move quickly as a cat that you saw down by the crap corridors and mighty patches to the mine. The sound of splintering wood, you pick up the pace, the entrance is close. Push through, I guess. And there it is. Freedom. Holy shit! You had to have the manager to screech at the entrance as well as the mines come crashing down.
Yeah, that'll be fucking horrible. I could not think of that in my head. Oh shit, you're okay? Thank God. Never in the count of four. That was a surprisingly close call. I'm gonna die in there. What do you weirdos do? Everything was fine until you adults showed up. I guess shut up! What did you just say to me? I said you should shut up! I'm sick of your two faced bullshit! This is a guy killed and you did! And now you're trying to pass it off wherever it is you can? It's just a cherry on top of this whole shit show of a friendship! I'm not, not good on the headspace of this conversation. I'm gonna die in there. What the hell are you doing this to me? No, enough! Enough playing the victim this time. Being friends with Rosalina has made me realize how horrible you are to me. Friends aren't supposed to be mean to each other. Friends aren't supposed to be scared of each other. I never wanted to go to the stupid mine. It was your idea. We could have died. If the grubs have showed up, we're going to bury the life in that stupid little tunnel drinking stupid strawberry my grass at the can. Screw all of you. Should we go after her? No. Let her have her little tantrum. Did that feel good, Alexis? Finally tell her, tell her off? Yeah, I guess. Oh, she's gonna be so mad at me. She won't talk to me for a week, maybe a month, maybe for the rest of my life. It's okay, Alexis. We don't need her. What do we do now? Uh, now I drive you to home. I already texted your parents. I'm sure they're worried sick about you. As they jump off to the side of the exhausted, Tabitha approaches your group. I'm going to my car, and then we're going home. Tabby. I'm gonna leave toward the active mind without no offer at a quiet moment to catch up with Stella and Kanika. There was some there was a stone carving on a wall in that pit. This is what a vision. I saw what happened to this place. You sure it wasn't just idle Justin? We're talking about the mine a lot today. Oh no, Neeks. I walked down here. I looked at me had like Simon Taylor's seizures next to a creepy stone carving. It was like something out of a movie. Just because he passed out or had seizures doesn't mean it wasn't out of suggestion. I saw something down there, like the shadows of dead miners. All oh, right behind Stella just before you all left. Did you not see them? Well, I didn't see any of the new and the carving. It's super weird. I don't want to doubt the what you experienced, but you were deep in a dark bed of coal mine. I've never been a prime to see things. You know, now that I think about it, that totally fits the profile of some Tommy Knocker stories. What if they're actual bona fide ghost? Oh, Stella. Everything that's happened down there is set in around that main chamber where I saw that carving. Stella showed me the photo. Weird stuff. Yeah, really weird. You sure those are Tommy Knockers? Depends on what you mean by sure. Is anyone really sure of anything? They fit the description pretty well, and I don't know how else they be. I have no idea what happened in there. I need to do some reading of my collapses, I guess. What happens now? Let's look tap with us back. I better drive these kids home. Better the kids home. Come on, let's get back to the estate. It's about a long day. I need to be over. See you tomorrow, okay, Alec? Excuse me, I just stop trying to get my cousin killed, Stella. Come on, let's go. I was just walking to her car and pulling you by your arm. Ow. I'll text you when I we're back. <laughs> Tabitha says the same word, the car cuts to the dark and road. He tried to keep an eye on us around, willing to just his drives very where it might look between the try line. Are you holding up? I'd be better. Sorry about today. It's fine. At least everyone's okay. There are a lot of parents who should have kept tighter reins of their kids. I never got into any trouble like this when I was a teen. I had poor lean to the tank for it. Hated it all the time, but it was strict and paid off. Ugh, what am I telling you this for?
You can tell me stuff. I'd like to know about you, about Pauline for that matter. Maybe later this week. I don't have energy to go through right now, but I think I like that. To be honest, this kind of thing, I don't know if the parents are at fault. I don't really think the parents are to blame here. I beg to differ. People who weren't ready, the parents shouldn't be parents. And clearly, that other parents have fault of them weren't ready. Take Oscar. There's a ton of people that qualify to be parents who can't even conceive. And there's he having a kid at 19, and clearly, and they are doing whatever she, hell she wants. It's not fair. You want kids? Lots of people want kids. Why do you treat Stell like that? Didn't you two used to be friends? It was a different time in my life. I just wish she'd get, she get that we're not in high school anymore. A different person than whoever she thinks she knows. You and Kanika didn't seem to get along. She pushed my buttons. There's some kind of history there, or no? Now quit talking. I need to focus on the road. I will do just that. Your eyes wander back to the tree line as you and Tabitha sink and get back to the sil silence. Thanks. You and once again cross through the threshold of the estate. The mushy stench of the decaying mansion greeting you with the undertones of mildew and mil wood rot. Well, this estate was a lot stressful than it needed to be. There's no way to get hurt. To Ben, it's just you do the same. Thanks for calling me about those kids, by the way. Expected. Could have. No, you should have waited for me. To argue, to argue. I'll see you in the morning. But the rest of the mix her up the stairs. I'm glad I called her. Able to collapse on top of this dusty guest bed. Your head empty of thoughts. After your time in the shop mine, you barely even notice the dust. What buzzes on the table? Y'all. These things are, these are the, the things, right? Nika sent the picture of the, yeah, there they are. I saw them again too. Another picture, this time be just staring off of a tree. What the fuck? These things are definitely not hairless monkeys or raccoons or whatever. I don't know what the hell they are. I guess that just more than being here in the mines, the collapse. No way, I'm not sleeping, to, I'm sleeping tonight. No way I'm sleeping tonight. You think about looking at the guest room window, but at this point you're too exhausted to leave your bed. The adrenaline from this evening is finally wearing off, replaced by creepy exhaustion that threatens to overwhelm you. You almost feel heavy. These weak arms are heavy. Your eyelids are slipping down already. Mom's spaghetti. You would stare down the ominous picture on your phone. If it weren't for the pit to drag ball into your stomach, you would almost feel uncomfortable as you settle in between your covers. Your tired bones sink into your decrepit matters. When you close your eyes, you see shadowy figures guide the mind Stella in the mines. You thought, your thoughts are drawn to the cover on a wall, and the visions imparted upon you. Your eyes shot back open. Your heart's pounding. The wind's so open. Oh, hey, Fru Fru. It's just the cat. It's always just the cat. It's nice to see another lovely being, even though as I finally step with this cat, the call to comfort the presence sets your mind at ease. You finally slip into deep sleep. Aww. Oh. There we go. Oh, Tabitha. What the fuck? Don't jump scare me. Don't be a piece of shit. What the? What the fuck? This is the end of episode two. Oh. And with that, that is where this video ends. Oh my god, that was. It, this keeps getting better and better. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and yeah, I'll see you all in episode three. Yeah.